sleeve thing. So I'm sitting over there because oh. I usually have necklaces on and stuff. And somehow I didn't have the appropriate one. And so I'm sitting there like, oh, what? I don't even have a long necklace. Every one. So it's like I got in my bag and I had one of these left. And it's like, so I, I just couldn't stand it because it's like I was missing something. <laughs> so. Um, but it's didn't you true. think that the tips that she gave were really helpful to kind of know about that? <clears throat> and the other thing, I don't know if I have myself turned on or not. <laughs> uh, oh, yes, there we go. So uh, maybe I should get away from there. Um, <clears throat> and the one thing, too, I'm going to tell you, because I, I love going in when Donna's in there, but even when she's not, her salespeople are really wonderful. Um, <clears throat> and there are just sometimes... You know, you see something on the rack, and it's so cute, and you say, oh, man, I want to wear that. And then you put it on, and it's like, you know, this really doesn't work too well. And you put it on, you think, well, maybe it's really not so bad, or maybe it is because you just love it on the hanger, and it looked cute on maybe somebody else that was on anything. So I love it, the fact that, so, but she's so sweet. And so, so Donna, like, what do you think? And she'll say, well, you know, there are some other things that look even better than that. <laughs> I mean, she really can turn it around and say it nicely, since we're all about being kind and saying only nice things. But I do appreciate that about the ladies in your store in there, because I don't want to go home and take something and put it in my closet. And then, yeah. have you ever done that where you've tried it on two days later or two months later, and every time you put it on, it just isn't right? And the truth is, you know it, mm -hmm. right? We talked about that in the store the other day. It's like, sometimes you just know. And this happened to me the other day. I, there's this really cute new dress coming out. It was like a black, um, sort of like a black mid-calf that was slit like an apron. And it had a white underneath that was like short here. That is like so cool. Yeah. I thought it was so cute. And I came out of it. Now, she, she did say she thought it looked really cute. And I liked the style of it. And I liked it on the hanger. But some, it didn't quite feel right. But it was so cute, the idea of it. So then I took it to my home with my sister and did my fashion show with my sister. Yeah, Delinda, that's just not really quite right. And I said, well, I knew that, but I just wanted it to be right. You know? So I think the... And that's what we do too often, and that's why I'm glad that you, you brought that up again and stress it. If it's not right, it's not right. It's okay. Because you'll find something else that is right. Yeah. But I do always encourage you, as you did, to go out of the box and try something different. Yeah. Because you might have gone home and say, you know what, this is exactly what I needed. I needed something different. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then and then you would keep it. But you will you'll be attached to it. You'll like it. You'll you're you know, you'll feel good in it. And if you don't, then it's not for you girls. Uh, trust me. I I work with ladies every day. I've been guilty of of myself. Um, I hopefully am have slim, slimmed my closet out and streamlined it to just keep the things that I absolutely love because I will tell you they'll sit there for years mm -hmm. but you yeah. can't get rid of them because oh my god I paid 50 bucks for that but you know and it, it but it doesn't look good mm -hmm. or it doesn't feel good so let's so clean else out have your it. closet only keep what fits looks good and you love get mm -hmm. rid of everything else because then once you empty your closet you can See, I've, I've made a deal to myself. I'm not buying anything new unless I get rid of something old. Because, mm -hmm. like, I don't need to just keep collecting. So get rid of the stuff that you're not wearing, you don't like, or whatever, and then go buy something new. <laughs> Is that right? That you love. <clears throat> that you because love. Because the pieces you love, you'll wear over and over. It's that 10% rule, too. Just like any place else or, or with any other thing, you're only wearing 10% of your closet. 90% is there, and you might wear it once a year but 10% of it you're wearing all the time because you like it mm -hmm. that much, that much more. Not that you didn't like the pieces, you know, when you bought them, but for whatever reason, they just don't turn the switch on anymore. So yeah. for whatever let time. it turn somebody else's switch on. There you Donate go. it. Somebody <coughs> else will say, oh, my God, this is perfect for me, and it's all good. Yeah. So we're just passing along, right? Yeah. Yeah. Great. One more Thank hug. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> Yeah, so a little one. Larry, it's time to give a prize giveaway. All right. I think we're going to give away three this time. That says. Marion. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it says, be inspired. Yeah, the bottom. Be inspired, be true, be you. Okay. okay.
Okay, Sorry. It says, be inspired, be true, Aww. be you. Aww. Perfect. <laughs> and it's okay. like that. Uh, Do we know where we could get a necklace like that if we don't win it? Thank you. It is really cool. It came from Chico, Donna Brown from Chico. Okay. I don't know if it's an in, in stock now item or not. So I know I saw it too, and she said, I'm going to tell you the truth. She, I said, oh, is this for the raffle? She said, yes, or you may keep it if you'd like. Aww. And I thought, well, that doesn't seem quite right, but I did like it. <laughs> but, you know, she, and it's really, um, really, no, go ahead. Miss Debbie, mother of uh, Michelle, would you come and do our drawing, please? Miss Debbie, mother of Michelle. Pick a good number. <laughs> come on, Debbie. Think me. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking mine. Hello. <laughs> It's not All right, so okay. I have a chance. Remember, <laughs> when you hear the number that you have, what do we do? We do? Okay. Two. Good. Nine. Seven. Three. Five. Five.
in whispers, sometimes through a friend, through the ocean, a song or a breeze, an email message from someone you love, like an angel sent from above. The baby boy that you longed and prayed for comes, a big surprise, God's miracles happen ever. As coincidence, come on, you know it's true. So stop, take a moment, just breathe, just a little pause, and you'll see. Happen every day. God's miracles, ordinary, some say. My God's miracles come in big and small ways. Sing it with me. God's miracles. Thank you. You guys, I want you to know what I want you to think, and we're going to have a little video come here in just a quick second. But the point of this song is that, obviously, what? Miracles happen every day, right? I want you to go and take your mind from the fact that not only are you the exclamation point, you are God's miracle. He has breathed life into you. You are his miracle for every day. You can touch someone's life in some way, whether it's in your family, at work, could be making a phone call. You know, when I hear somebody nice on the phone, I tell them. I mean, it's like, man, you are so good at your job. Do they know how good you are answering the phone? Now, don't you think that makes her day? Now, I don't say if it's not true. And if they're not nice, I don't tell them they're not, you know, but it's amazing the difference you can make just doing your regular life. God does not call us all out to be, when I was a teenager, I thought, sure, God was calling me to missionary to be overseas someplace. And probably a lot of us thought that, right? If you grew up in the church, <clears throat> I am going to say, somebody asked me in the hallway today, and I thought it was so an interest, not interesting, I thought it was really sweet that she asked me, she said, how long have you known the Lord? I said, I am so blessed. I have been walking with Jesus since I was seven years old. Uh, I was saved. I accepted Christ my Savior in a Baptist revival meeting. It was an all-week meeting. And during one of those nights, it's like, okay, Lord, you're, I'll do it. I'm going. Thank you. And been walking with him ever since. So I have that honor that I've been able to just know that. that. I think that's why I just so know it, know it. And I want you all to know it and have it and understand how precious you are. You are his miracle every day. Your smile, your just tap on the shoulder, that's one thing when you can just go up to someone and say, you are so special to me, and you know that's true. Um, that just those little things, and they don't take that much out of your day. They certainly don't take that much out of, you know, of time to do, but they can be mind and world, I mean, such major change, I guess what I'm trying to say. <clears throat> Because it can change somebody's day just to um, know that somebody cares about them, just even in the small amount. And we are influencing people every day. No matter, where you no matter what you think about, people are watching us every day. You know, they're watching us when we're in the grocery store. They're even watching you when you're in your car and you're driving and they look over and you say, yeah! 
they're saying, okay, that lady's really mad in that car over there. Uh, they're watching how you treat your family. They're watching you when you're at a restaurant and how you treat the server. If you think they're not, you are mistaken. People are watching because that's what we're supposed to be. We're to be the light. We're being the light. We're out there walking, and we're representing Jesus all the time. We're representing who we are and who he created us to be. And I love Nelson Mandela, made, and I, I, don't have, I didn't bring the thing with me, uh, but I love it in a speech that he gave. Marianne Williamson actually wrote it, but he gave the speech. And basically he says, who are you not to shine? It is your God-given gift to shine and spread the light to others because by shining, you give other people permission to shine also. So sometimes, you know, when we, sometimes in being in the Baptist church, we were always told, do not draw any attention to yourself. And so I always had this personality that I have now that I've always had. And for the first 35 years of my life, whenever I got up to sing, which is the only thing I was doing then, I wasn't speaking, and I get up to sing, and if I sing in church or whatever, I'd put on my, and not because I liked it, I'd just go put on my darkest thing I had, which was navy blue. I didn't wear black because it made me look too vamp, and that was not kosher at that time. That was not the thing to look. So I would put on my navy, and I would stand there, and I would sing. And I would mean the words, and my heart would mean them, but I was so afraid of drawing attention to myself that I wouldn't shine. I wouldn't let the shine out. I wouldn't let Jesus shine. So... One, somewhere, I don't know exactly when, I, I, I should start writing, y'all do this, when you start having those aha moments, write them down, but I should write some of these down. Um, I don't know if I could backtrack to figure it out, but basically, there's a, um, a verse, that's in Philippians 2, 14 and 15, I think it is, and it basically says, stop your whining and complaining, and it says, but shine like stars in the universe as you hold out the word of truth, and I'm telling you, that was life-changing. Shine like stars in the universe. I'd say, like, okay, Lord, does that mean I can, like, be myself? You mean I can really go and I can, if I love you and I want to raise my hands and say, thank you, Jesus. If I want to say, praise the Lord, it's okay if I move my arms and all that. And I love Robin. Robin is a wonderful, she loves to praise. And she's one of the few people in our congregation, because we are Presbyterian. I'm a Presbyterian now. And so and very few in our congregation feel comfortable enough. And I'm not saying you have to, but if you feel it and you want to, it's like it's just so nice. So it's like, thank you, Lord. You, he gave me permission to be myself. So I'm telling you, God gives you permission to be yourself because he basically made you to be that way. And just because you don't fit the mold of somebody else, just because you don't, you know, somebody told you, well, who do you think you are? Or they said to you, like, you know, you are just good for nothing. That just like breaks my heart to think people say that, but I know they do. Or I've heard, I have actually heard people say to their kids in the grocery store, oh, you are so stupid, stop that. Like, how dare you talk to that child like that? Those are hard patterns to break. But if you came from that, you can break it because you can decide that that's not true because you know it's not. God didn't say that. So this next video is a little sketch on how we as women sometimes see ourselves. Okay? Nope, nope, that's wrong. Sorry, that's not me. I probably told you wrong. But that's a cool song. We'll go back to that. <laughs> I, I, I added that in and I forgot to put it. There, that's it. <laughs> I just discovered this song and it's like so amazing. We'll do it later. I'm a forensic artist. Worked for the San Jose Police Department from 1995 to 2012. I showed up to a place I'd never been and there was a guy with a drafting board. We couldn't see them, they couldn't see us. Tell me about your hair. I didn't know what he was doing, but then I could tell after several questions that he was drawing me. Tell me about your chin. It kind of protrudes a little bit, hmm. especially when I smile. Your jaw? My mom told me I had a good jaw. What would be your most prominent feature? Kind of have a fat around your face. The older I've gotten, the more freckles I've gotten. I would say I have a pretty big forehead. Once I get a sketch, I say thank you very much, and then they leave. I don't see it. All I had been told before the sketch was to have, get friendly with this other woman, Chloe. Today I'm going to ask you some questions about a uh, person you met earlier, and I'm going to ask you some general questions about their face. She was thin, so you could see her cheekbones. And her chin, it was a nice, thin chin. 
She had nice eyes. They lit up when she spoke. Cute nose. She had blue eyes, very nice blue eyes. <clears throat> So here we go. This is the sketch that you helped me create. And that's a sketch that somebody described of you. Yes. I think Dove is actually doing some wonderful things. If you go on YouTube, I, if you really, there are some amazing things. That Dove has a whole bunch of sketches because they're wanting, their campaign is to help women feel better about themselves. They're using plus size models. They're doing really just a lot of things to help women change the concept inside our heads. And the, just so you know, the world out there, the days, um, are trying to make you feel bad about yourself. Okay? I mean, there's a campaign. It's all about, and I have to say, it's about money. It's a bottom line of money. And they want you to feel bad about yourself because if you feel bad about yourself, you're gonna go out and buy their product that's gonna make you better, right? Yeah. So if you, if you want to have lots of friends and go into the party and have big smiles and happy, you're gonna go use Crest White Strips so that your teeth are all white and shiny and you can smile with the whiteness, right? And if you want a really cute, handsome guy like Matthew McConaughey, you gotta go like buy that car and drive that car because it's gonna put you in that kind of spring. <laughs> it's like, you know, well, I think that probably, you know, I think the sales for what, but you know what, the funny thing is, I don't even remember, is it Chrysler? Is that who? Or Lincoln? See, I don't even care, I just look at him. I, I like him, I think he's cool. But the, huh? Yeah, I just think he's amazing, I like him. And so, it's all, the, just know that you are fighting every day against this concept the world is presenting to you. And that's why it's so important that you surround yourself with people who are like-minded, people who are going to encourage you and uplift you and energize you, people who are going to say, yeah, you go, girl, you can do it. And by coming here, I mean, it's like I'm speaking to the cream of the crop here. You are here today because for some reason you felt like this would be a place where you could come and maybe to be encouraged or to learn a new idea or something about your life. So first of all, I'm very grateful for that. I'm so glad that you did. And I want to always encourage you to um, like put the exclamation point on your mirror. You can, you know, mirrors are more than just to look at yourself. They're really great for reminders. And so, and I learned this actually in Mary Kay because when I was on my, like built and earning my Cadillac, it's like, I am a Cadillac driver. And sometimes it'll be, I'm strong and courageous. And then one, some days it might be, I'm fearless. And I don't usually do them all at the same time. But lipstick wipes off. I mean, you know, it cleans off the mirror. You're not damaging anything except maybe the head of your lipstick. So I don't use my favorite lipstick because I don't want to, you know, mess it up. So, but writing notes to yourself, and so I'm going to tell you the story about um, the notes to self, by the way. So I have a girlfriend, her name is Laura Schmidt, and she was a Mary Kay director with, with me. She and I had the same national sales director, um, and, who was Pam Ross, who I have to say, sometimes I am talking and I feel like, oh my gosh, that is Pam Ross. I learned so much from this woman. She was like amazing. She still is, she's alive and she's still a director, but since I'm not actively working Mary Kay business anymore, I sort of put it in past tense, but she's amazing. Anyway, I learned so much from her, and 
so she would, that was one of the things. She says, put whatever you put in front of yourself is what you're going to think about and what you think about you're going to do. Your, your body, yourself, is going to do whatever you tell it. And if you tell it that you are just a fat, stupid person and you, you, know, you made so many mistakes you don't have, you know, you're not worth it, then your body's going to keep, yourself is going to keep perpetuating that. When you start telling yourself, I am the exclamation point, I am God's miracle every day and I have everything I need, hallelujah, that's who you're going to be. And if you don't really believe it today, just keep saying it because yourself, yourself is going to make that happen because its whole job, your inside self, its whole job is to do whatever you tell it to do. So you tell it the good things and it will start manifesting that. And it's God who's doing that, it's not the universe. I have this wonderful neuroscientist woman that's a great friend of mine, and we actually are in a mastermind together. And I, I really, I love her because she's so smart, and she'll say something, I'll say, oh, Lynn, you are so, this is a different Lynn. Lynn, you are, I just love to hear you talk. She's a, she just knows how to put words together and stuff. But she'll talk about the universe, and every so often, because I, I can't preach it every day, you know. <laughs> so I'm going to say, so, and the other day was one of those days because she had really had a tough week. And she said something about that, and I said, Lynn, I know that you're going to say this is the universe. I said, but the truth is, it's God working in your life. If you'll just, just realize that that's what's happening here, is that God is taking you to a new place, and I think he's opening up a new avenue for you, but it's God doing it if you just open to it. So it, it's what you're telling yourself and what you're feeding yourself. What are you watching on TV? Now, I'm like most, I, I mean... I do watch a lot of Hallmark because I'm such a sap. <laughs> and I just love those men. Some of them are the same story, just done with different actors, a little twist, whatever. But I do love movies, and there are certain move things I do, but I cannot do it as a constant diet because it's going to affect. It's some, some of it is those commercials that you're seeing in between that I was just talking about that's telling you that you're not enough, that you're not good enough, you don't have enough value until you go buy such and such. And you're only, really, you're only a really great mom if you buy the correct detergent for your clothes. Because, you know, otherwise you're just not a good mom. And like, get over that, that is so not true. You know, we love our kids and hey, even if the laundry stacks up a little bit, it doesn't mean we don't love our kids. If we don't, you know, if we don't use such and such a thing. So really understand, understand that about yourself. So um, I, I wanna take just a quick moment to, um, I, I wanna hear a little bit more about your purpose and then we're gonna move on a bit to um, passion is our next P. Um, but one, one person at a table, just stand up. This one person stand up that maybe we haven't heard from as much, just tell me your, I want you to read your whole one, two, three. You know, I do this for who to get this result. Okay, back to your purpose sheet. I know you forgot about that already, didn't you? <laughs> we have had a few things going on. And while y'all are looking at that, I just want to tell you, your little bags on the back, by the way, it was Darcy walked out of the room. There she is. Darcy's company is the one who actually had these printed for me. So these little bags came, and I thought they were so cool. Don't you love them? Yeah. So those are your little bag. Put all your stuff in it. Enjoy and Walk around. And when people say, what's wild the world? You say, you got to come to one. Delinda Lane, go online and, you know, have them, have, have them join our group. And... Uh, so anyway, so I love those. I think they're cool. Okay, so over here. One person, stand up. Give me your little one, two, three. Come on, come on. Don't be shy. Okay, Soraya. Okay, my purpose in life is to encourage disadvantaged to have a bright future and follow their gifts. Very nice. Thank you. Okay, over here, back in the back. One of y'all. Yeah, so? on your feet. No, I haven't finished my yet. Just one. You can just do it. I, what's your, the whole thing of the, the purpose and the... Okay, give to those that need to lift them up and encourage. Okay, great, great. Did you want to do your thing, Kissy? Or did you have... I think I did it right. So well, I'm sure you put, did. Put the, the little blank. Circled in each little box, right? Yes. Uh, my purpose in life is to encourage business professionals to love and accept themselves. Great, all right, that's exactly right. Okay, so how about over here? <laughs> You guys, you are not, okay, I'm not going to let y'all go to lunch anymore. <laughs> My purpose in life is to inspire women to achieve all that they are trying to and to leave their own legacy. Yay, I love that. I haven't heard the legacy one. Okay, we got a volunteer. Look at that. Jump right up. My purpose in life is to serve others to help youth at risk and to open up a nonprofit youth camp for children. Wow, that is great. 
Okay, over here. Who's going to stand and stand and shout and sing? Okay, and did it, did it have the third thing so that they can? So that they, be, that, so that they can become everything they want in them. Okay, <laughs> all, right. all right. So this is, so this is something, you know, your sort of assignment, should you choose to accept it, is to can continue to work on that and sort of fine tune that to what you really, you know, so that you can own that and just know that I know this is what God has. And, and while you're doing it, he may even show you a different thing or a little different way of tweaking, a different way to use that. So, and when, you've, when you discover your purpose, and let me, let me make a quick little check here. Okay, oh, I'm, okay, we're good. Okay, so the next thing in your pattern then, so we've talked about the purpose and you have an idea now. And did that, by the way, did that help to give you a little clarity to help a little bit? Because I think sometimes we talk about these nebulous things. You know, it's like sometimes in church we talk about, oh, go ahead, you know, I'm saved by Jesus. And they're saying, what are you saved from? Are you, a, you know, on a car wreck or what? You know, I mean, sometimes people don't understand. So sometimes we talk about our purpose. Well, what does that really mean? Is it, does it matter? What is, why does it matter? So we've, we've really done that. So the next thing is your passion and, and our four Ps that we're talking about. And the, the next one is your passion. And God put a passion in every single one of us that in the passion of one person is greater than just the blase blah of a hundred. You know, people that are just walking through their life just kind of ho-hum, they're just kind of going to work every day. And I think, how, to me that's so sad to just see people not have hope, not have passion about something that they love. Um, when you love something, when you just, it, it's like, you just, you, you can't not feel it, you can't not do it, that passion, it's what ignites everything. It's that what gets you going. It's that little fire that's burning in there, and we want to. We want that to like ignite. And you can tell a person on fire. On fire, yeah, a person on fire as well as a person on with passion. It's like it's in their eyes. It's in their body. It's in their enthusiasm. And and there is something very very powerful about quiet passion. Passion doesn't have to be really big and bold. Passion can be. and you're around somebody and you can just tell they're just like this burning flame of passion about what they're doing. It doesn't have to be loud and crazy like I get all excited that way. So it's passion is what really keeps your motor running for things. That um, you, it's that thing that you can't not do. If you're in a, a group and something comes up and you, if you can't not do this whatever it is, I can't not tell you how great you are. I, I just can't. If I'm talking to you one-on-one -on -one and you start talking about something and I'll say, Gosh, you do that so well. I mean, and, and it's never made up. There's it's just something that when you're with other people just comes out of you. So that's how you know that goes back to purpose as well. But it really is. It's that passion that just grows inside of you. Um, Ecclesiastes 9.10 says, Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. So wherever you're planted, whatever you're doing, that thing that ignites you and gets you going, do it with everything you guys like. Go for the gusto, right? And don't have to be beer. We can go for the gusto of life and just letting it, letting it um, just shine out of us as if, there's, as if there's like this radiant light that just is around us and it's the light of Jesus. I'm, I'm never going to not say that's it. But it's when you are passionate about what you're doing, that light just shines about you. Um, and I'll tell you, Diane Warrior, she talked about the financial thing, and we were standing out in the parking lot one day. I don't think you mind if I share. I do it anyway. I <laughs> probably not. Um, but anyway, but we were just out there talking. She started talking about how she goes in and she helps. I think it's seniors or people that, that and she goes anybody. anybody. So she goes in and they're having trouble with their taxes or their finances, and she actually gets quite excited. Now I cannot for a minute think that would be exciting. <laughs> First of all, I don't know enough about it, um, but she really got very excited about being able to help them and give them an answer. So she's doing, because she couldn't not help them. That's just part of how she's made and put together. And I'm sure that Julia can't go into someplace and not want to help them, even if 
They don't want their, her help, but she can't help wanting to help them, right? So when you're in that place, and now the other side, another way to find that. So let me just ask, and, and I'm not going to ask you to tell me what it is. I'm going to give you a break for a minute. But I want you to tell me, do, do you know, that, is there one thing that you know that you're like passionate about? Do you kind of, can you know what that is? Okay. Does everybody have something in their passion? Okay, not yet. Okay. So we're still in the discovery zone, and that's good, right? Um, but when, when you find that, it, it's like this whole new thing opens up for you to, that you get passionate about. But a way you can find out, another way to discover that is what makes you really mad? What makes you really mad? I mean, like, what do you just like, oh, I just can't stand that. How can they do that? What is something that makes you mad? For instance, my son. Okay, now he's not what makes me mad. But I'll tell you what his passion is. Even as a little boy, he would say, Mom, that is just so not right. Why are those people so mean to him? He cannot stand injustice. He just wants everybody to be treated the same. He just doesn't get it. Well, and he's right. There's no reason not to. But it, it really, from a little, he just knew that inside as a little boy. It didn't matter color, where they came from, age, nothing. And he, somewhere when he was about, who was I telling this story to? It might have been Barb. Um, Barb gets all my stories and I think, did I have I told this before? Um, but when he was young and I'm thinking, we were out shopping in Kansas City down in the plaza and there was a homeless man um, outside and um, we had gone in and then he left and I said, he said, I'll be right back. And I said, well, where are you, where are you going? He said, don't worry, Mom. It's okay. I'll be right back. And, and he was old enough that I could let him out of my sight. He was, I don't know, 11 or 12 or something. And he came in and I watched him go up and he bought food. And I said, well, aren't you going to come? I'll be, Mom, I'll be right back. And, and he's a very trustworthy kid. I mean, I knew he, had, he was on a mission for something. And he took that meal out and gave it to this homeless man and sat out there and talked with him. <laughs> Blew me away. And I've seen him do that numerous times. His heart is about treating everybody fairly. It wasn't just the homeless, if it had been someone else. And we took a train for his graduation. We took a train, something we just thought about doing. So we took a train from Z San Bernardino, California. And um, it was like the, the, all, an overnight, you know, and we slept in the birth booth, births, I think is what they're called. Sure. And, and the, um, the dining car had the tablecloth on it. I, just, I had done that as a little girl, and I thought it was cool. And he and I talked. He said, well, let's do that. And so we did. So I'm, like, reading books, and I'm doing something. And we chat, and we do. And he says, well, I'm going to go meet some people, because he's like a meet and greet kind of guy. And he goes and he comes back, and I said, where have you been? Well, I've been playing checkers with these guys. And he was just, like, in this other car talking to people. And some of, some of them were, I said, well, what do you all talk about? Oh, Mama, they just tell me about their lives and they're just thing. He just has such a heart for people and he wants everybody treated the same. So when you think about it, is there something that just when this happens, somebody's mistreated or something that just really makes you mad? So that's how some you can discover your passion because if it really irritates you, that means you're you're positive about the other side of that. You, you get what I'm saying? If you get really mad about injustice, that means your passion is to help the injustice, to help right the wrongs, to you know, go out and, and help the immigrants who are being mistreated, or to you know, whatever it is of all those things that you made. So I thought that was, I thought was kind of cool as a way to, to, to discover that. Um, I was at a networking meeting in Kansas City, and this lady got up to, oh, no, that's not right, it was here. And uh, she got up and she did her, for some reason she had like five minutes. Usually you have like 30 seconds or one minute, but whatever reason she had a little more time. And she told about her business and you could tell that she liked it. And she was like, it and it was happy and it was all good. And she really does a great, a great cause. Um, and then later, as it was finishing up, I, I was walking by and I heard her talking to someone else and she's like, her eyes are glowing. Oh my gosh, I just love to cook and I made this big meal for somebody and she was like so happy. I said, okay, honey, that's where your passion is. Sorry to tell you, but your job, you might like it, but you are passionate about cooking. So it's that thing that lights you up, that passion of what you have. So have, have we passed out the passions? Okay, so we're, they're gonna do a thing. We're gonna do a similar thing with passion that we just did with purpose to help you identify that so you can get a little bit more uh, clarity in um, what you're doing. And, and it's pretty easy. Again, you're gonna kind of do the little circle thing. So they're gonna hand you a packet and just uh, one of the tables and just pass them around. And I don't know, Mary, if I put those on. Would you see if I did those on the thing? 
Okay, so, oh, oh no, that's not right, go back. That, that, that's my fault, I, don't, I didn't think I put these on here. Okay, that's my fault. Oh good, maybe I'll take that one, because I need to look at it. Did everybody get one? Is that coming around? Oh good, I get it. Oh, well, you have one, you just have it. Oh, this is purpose again. No, no, this oh, one that's yours, I'm sorry. I need that. Okay. All right, so did we wind up with an extra? I need an extra passion. Actually, I don't need any more passion. But. <laughs> okay. All right, so as you see here, action one is determine what you love. Circle the words that apply to you and add others as you think of them. These are ongoing. So do you like to learn? Do you like to ask questions? Do you like to encourage others? So go down and circle a couple of those. Lisa would know I don't like details, and Kathy would know. Don't give me too many details. I really don't care. Just give me to the bottom line. So that's just not going to be me. But some of you really like that, and so circle that. And if it's not on here, write it down. And then on the other side, what do you dislike? My favorite one is listening to negative people. I just don't. I, don't, I just don't like negativity. I'm not going to stay in negativity. I'm going to remove myself from negativity. And that also means including the people that might be in your life that are negative. But so do, your, do that. So your likes and, and your dislikes. My sister's favorite word is redundancy. She hates redundancy. She just can't even stand it. OK. How are we doing? We're getting through those. So now go to the second page. And I want you to look down. There's two lists here, and it's your strengths and your needs improvement. Now, we're not going to focus a lot on the needs improvement, but these are ways for you to see yourself with a little bit more clarity. Are you a visionary and you think big? Are you action-oriented? Your strength is resourceful and creative. Is your strength thinking out of the box? Do you have a strong desire to be successful? And again, there could be other things that just aren't in this list. All of these lists really are here just to get your brain to kind of to start thinking, to let it start uh, thinking about new things. Now, I know that there are a number of you in here on the needs improvement down about halfway that says, very hard on myself, perfectionist. Perfectionist, it shouldn't even be a word. You're never going to be perfect, so if you give it up now, you'll be happier. I'm telling you, it's true. Doesn't mean you can't be excellent. Excellent's a whole different thing. You can be excellent without being perfect. No tolerance for others, maybe that's your thing. So as you see, I'm moving a little faster through these because I figure y'all can read these pages. Now, I, there's one of these on here that's so funny. The next page is, Ident help to help you identify your passion. So as you looked at your love and you identified some of the things that you like and that you're strong in, here's just some things. What are some activities or an action that you could do to help support your passion? I love this. Become a nun. No. <laughs> but it says a nun or a minister, you know, so that, that's in there, depending on what things. Become a mentor. Become a counselor. Now say, I, I believe that I am a mentor. I'm a mentor and a coach, but I am not a um, counselor on a hotline. That is not where my best gift would be. But yours might be, and depending on what you've had in your life, that might be something that's important to you. And I would venture to say that, I know that every one of y'all has a story. Many of you might have a book inside. And more than one. So how did we do? We're getting pretty good on, we picked, we figured out what you like. Okay, so I want to hear from somebody I haven't heard from. So I want you to tell me, I want you to take your little sheet and I want you to say, I like this and this. My strength is this and this or one. And I think an action could be, I could do blah, blah. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so who wants to tell me over here? Okay, go ahead, Sam. Okay, so I like encouraging others. I dislike allowing others to have control over my life. My 
My strengths are um, I'm extremely outgoing and I have a strong desire to be successful. My need for improvement is lacking balance in some areas of my life. And um, one of my passions is to be a teacher or an athletic coach. Wow, that is great. I love that. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, give her a hand. Okay, how about you ladies over here? Who's going to? Uh, you have to stand up. That's part of the rule. <laughs> well, just read one or one on each thing. Okay. Likes undertaking challenging multifaceted projects, encouraging others, reading books. Dislikes listening to negative people, <laughs> dealing with office or company politics, redundancy, allowing others to have control over my life. Read this page too. Strengths. Action oriented, passionate, enthusiastic, focused, committed, resourceful, and creative, needs improvement, lacking financial resources, limited accounting, financial knowledge. I think that's it. Oh, and the third page. Becoming a trainer inside a large corporation, teaching an adult or child to read, donate time to favorite charity, become a mentor, volunteer at a hospital, become a counselor. On counselor for a hotline or spend time with a niece and nephew who needs support. Okay, great. Now I want you to I want you to trim that down to the okay. top 2 on each page. Okay? okay? Because you can be all over the place. We can all do many, many things and that's beautiful. And I, and thank you for sharing that. No, I love it. That was beautiful. But I want to, I, if I were coaching you right now, which I am, <laughs> so I might as well say so, um, I, I would like to see you narrow that down to 2 on each page that really that little bit more, that like that little bit more. Okay, cool. Okay, how about here? Who's gonna do our thing back here? Who hasn't done it? Huh? Uh, yeah. Well, a or a, on any of them? Okay, can see. Go. Stand up and do yours. No, no, no. I mean, I haven't done it. Like, I'm, I'm like, oh, like you. She's laughing at me because I've got the brow, and I'm like, oh my god. No, it's not hard. You circle the first thing that comes to your mind. Right, right, right. This isn't perfect. Oh my gosh. So, no, it's like don't you know those 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 tests that they give and they say don't think about it, just circle your the first yeah. thing that comes to your mind because the thing is you already know your body, it's yourself. Improvement I circled very hard on myself. Oh, oh yeah, duh. On the next page. <laughs> Oh, that's right. <laughs> okay, who did it at the table who would like to share? You want to share? Okay, so my likes is encouraging others. Um, my dislikes, handling, accounting, and bookkeeping. Good, you can hire it. That's good. <laughs> Strengths are um, resourceful and creative, needs improvement, um, lacking balance in some areas of my life. Big time. Um, <laughs> A little aside there. <laughs> identify your passion. Action three. I have two passions. One is working with people in addiction, and um, a real heartfelt passion of mine is helping my son, who is graduating college this year, with his next step. Excellent. All right. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Give her a hand. Okay, back here. Who's going to share at this table? Yes. Oh. Hi. Oh. <laughs> okay, well. So, my likes are um, meeting positive people, action oriented people. My dislikes is giving people bad news. Uh, my strength is extremely outgoing. My needs improvement is um, um, aggressive. A what? A nurse or a doctor. A nurse or a doctor. Yay. Good for you. All right. Okay. How about over here? Who's going to share? I'll do it. Okay. Okay. Thank I you. I'm passionate about encouraging others. Um, my dislike would probably be redundancy. Right. <laughs> exactly. Crazy. Um, my strength is I'm passionate and enthusiastic. Uh, I need improvement on life and balance in some areas of my life. And I'm passionate about uh, striving for justice amongst all people because I think that there's a lot of injustice in the world. 
we're all created equal, we're all God's people, mm -hmm. and the other ones will be feeding the homeless. Okay. Uh -huh. okay, great, great. Yay, give her a hand. When you take, uh, when you pick pur uh, purpose, the purpose ignites your spirit and that generates that fire and that fire is your passion. So when you put the two, when you figure your purpose and then you, you, think you infuse that with your passion, there is no stopping you. It opens up a whole new world of opportunity for you um, and things that you can do in changing the world by changing where you are. It's gonna change your life, it's gonna change your relationships, it's gonna change your business. Um, George Lucas said this, uh, he said, you have to find something that you love enough to be able to take the risk, jump over the hurdles, and break through the brick walls that are always going to be placed in front of you. If you don't have that kind of feeling for what you're doing, you'll stop at the first hurdle. And that is that you have to just keep going, that unstoppable spirit, that that giving it more and then some. George Burns said, I would rather be a failure at something I love than a success doing something I hate. You know, it's like, you know, just, it generates your supply. Passion is what gives you the energy to keep going even when you feel like you need to stop or even when people are telling you that it's not going to um, make a difference and that you can't do it. Uh, your belief system fig figures into that because it's that belief and who you are and that believe that this is what you're meant to do. When you, when you fine tune this and you look through your list and your circles and you really can say that with conviction, it's when you take that believe, I believe I can do this, and then you take the passion into that and you put it together, then it becomes a conviction and you can't not do it. It's like so inside you and becomes like, I don't care what anybody else says, I am gonna help these people that are being, uh, uh, abused or whatever it is it's like really giving that giving your all no matter what and that's that really that perseverance which we're going to we'll talk about just a little bit later um, that makes the difference than, than just stopping because you know if it's just a little something you've thought about or you know think oh it'd be nice or here's the one that gets a lot of us oh well i really should do that if you ever do something because you, you feel like it's a shoulda that's not really the thing for you you know, sometimes we do small things like you might do, but I would say, y'all, even like in your church or your other community activities that you do, if you're not, if you don't have a heart for it, don't do it because some, there is somebody else that God is grooming for that. You know, he, he's the one sort of controlling everything. Did y'all sort of know that? Not us. He's God and I'm not. So he's working in his thing. He's going before us and behind us, and he already he has this under control. He knows where it's going. So he's grooming somebody for this thing. So don't just say yes because you think you should. Like only do it if it's what you're meant to do, if it's important to you. And that's what stops us from reaching our best. It's just important to really grab onto that thing that's going to make you your highest and best. Real estate, real estate we call it highest and best use. You know, if the, we've got a couple of um, golf courses here in town, unfortunately, that are like going under because it's really not their highest and best use. And they need that. They're, some of them are going to be turned into apartment buildings or whatever because that's a better use. Of course, it makes more money, but then you know, that's part of the highest and best use concept, though. So you want to be doing your highest and best use of what God has for you. So don't settle. Don't settle for something else. I don't want to talk to y'all a little bit, so y'all can just kind of put your papers down, and I'm going to just chat with you a, a little bit. Some of you have been with me for a long time, and I love that. And I, you know, my gals at church, they, they've just been so supportive. And in gifts, we, um, Tiffany are, is our leader, which I told you, and, and they, she said, well, how would you feel if we did your book as our book study for the fall session? And was it fall? I've already forgotten. Because this is, this is summer, or was it spring? I uh, and, and, so, and so we did, and I, I felt so honored about that. And part of what I've learned in the last year um, is that I feel in some ways, and this is not a negative, because what it's going to start out sounding sort of like a negative, but it's really not a negative, is that I feel like that over these last couple of years, because I've done four of these, four or five of these Wow the World Fun Fearless Female events, and what I realized is, um, through a coach that I had myself, was that I was doing the ladies who came a disservice in some way because I never 
gave a way, a way gave them a, a way to stay connected because it's so hard to do it by yourself. And so I just, I sort of, I did them, and it's like, oh, I loved it, and I, I love them, and they're so gracious, and that's how I feel about you today. And I'm so thrilled that I've had this opportunity to do this. And then we would all go home and go our separate ways, and I'd have a couple of ladies who would come up to me that I know, like a church or someplace, that I see on a regular basis, and, you know, and say to me, well, you know, Jolene, that was really great, and I, I kept that positive thinking up for a while, and, you know, been a couple of weeks now, and I just sort of went back to my old habits. I went back to the old way. I mean, the reason is because we've been groomed that way, and we've been thinking that way for however old we are, you know? So for maybe it's been 30 or 40 years. Some of y'all are young. You might have only been doing, I don't know. Who is our youngest person in here? <laughs> youngest at heart. I love that. How old are you? 25. Anybody less than 25? 21. <laughs> I love that, Sue. I love that. Smile. <laughs> I really wouldn't want to go back to my 20s. I, I, didn't, I mean, I liked them and everything, but I kind of thought, I think the 40s. I mean, I, I think the 40s yeah. was kind of cool. <laughs> um, so the thing is, what I want to talk to you today about, and this is, I've never done this before, um, so I, I hope you'll bear with me and you'll hear my heart is that I want to provide a way for you to stay connected with me so you can stay connected to your journey. Because I feel like it's so hard, like when you're watching TV and you're bombarded by this is what you're supposed to look like. This is the shape you're supposed to be. You're supposed to do this. And so you're, you're fighting against that. And sometimes you're fighting against someone in your family that's telling you you're not enough. Or you wake up, sometimes you wake up in the middle of the night and you're thinking, there has to be more. You know, what is that? Lord, don't you have something more for me? And I know, I know that that's true. This, you know, I don't know who that is in here of you. And some of you just want, you just say, I'm from a different perspective, is that, you know, I, I, I know that there is, but what is it? It's like, I know it. I can feel it like it's coming, but you don't quite know how to take that next step. And it's hard to do by yourself. And so since, and I've had some people say to me, so like, so what do you do, Delinda? <laughs> I was like, well, I speak and I sing and I kind of fluff it off. But the truth is, what I now own about myself is that I'm a mindset coach. I help people think differently. I help you think about who you are and what you want in your life. I help you get to the next phase. And I do it by these kind of things here, because that's what we've been, I'm encouraging you and sharing information. But I also do it at one-on-ones with, with clients who want to just work with me face-to-face, one-on-one, um, in a, on a weekly basis. And then um, I now am expanding. I, I, have, I had a little beta group in Kansas City, three ladies who um, came together with a group, and it just sort of happened. It was like just one of those God things, how it evolved. And they've been on a, we've been on a three-month, is that right, three-month journey together. And so every week, four-month. Oh, it's four-month. Thank you, Bart. Well, you, well, that's right. We started with a workshop once a month, but then we went to, so we do a once a month in person thing. And then we would do every, like every Monday night on a Zoom call. But we, so we would all see each other face to face and we had that. So I, I'm offering to you today, I'm going to tell you about a program that I've started. And if you have interest in this, I just want to let you know it's available. Because I don't want you to leave thinking now, how, what do I do with this stuff? What do I do with this information? I've got a little more clarity with where I'm going. You know, I, I feel like I'm beginning to understand my purpose and my passion. So now what? So I want to help you find your now what, whatever that may be. And so, um, Mary, if you'll go to the next thing. These are some of the things I would like to, uh, yeah, not that one and not, yeah. Keep going, because I messed you up. And there we go. So I call it my power up plan, because I want to help you master your self-talk. I want to help you quit. Huh? From finding your wow to your now. Oh, there you go. I love that. Would somebody write that down? <laughs> uh, you know, and I love great ideas coming forward. Say it one more time. You went from finding your wow to finding your now. Oh, I love that. Finding your, I should call that. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to incorporate, I'm going to steal it from you because you gave it to me. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm gonna, I want to help you master the skills of being positive in a negative world because it's really hard to do it by yourself. And you guys, it's not a weakness to do that. I want you to know it actually shows great strength 
to reach out and to ask for help or to just have someone come alongside of you because I want, here's my thing, I want to breathe the belief about you into you until you can believe in yourself. That's what I'm called to do. I want to breathe that belief into you. I want to give you the energy, that boost that you need to just walk alongside you and, until, until whenever. I mean, until you don't need me anymore or want me anymore or until you've arrived. But you know what I'm saying? It's like, I just don't want you to be by yourself because it's hard. I want to build your confidence so you can feel confident to walk into a room, to know who you are and discover your wow to do the now, whatever it was, I love that. And to help you, help you design a plan for your life to help you keep going. Because if you don't have a plan, you can find your purpose and you can have your passion and you're all fired up and you can you know, get going and it's like, oh, okay, now, now what, what do I do? So it's like, you need a plan, a way to process this, a way to take those steps as you go along. So I would love to be that, but, and I would say to you, but I'm not the only one. I'm not the only answer. Of course, I think I'm the best answer. But, but there are lots of wonderful coaches and mentors out there. But if you really want to make a change, and so find somebody to do that. I'm in a coaching, I've been in a coaching program now for several years because I know the only way I'm going to grow is for me to be in a program um, that helps me grow and get, my, get me to the next level. I just don't want you to feel alone and to feel like you're struggling anymore. So this, what I am offering to you is I want to do a four, it's basically a four month, but 16 month, a 16 week um, ongoing journey. And here's what it would look like, if you'll go Mary to the next slide. Um, it's gonna be 20 hours of live group sessions. So does everybody know what Zoom is? It's like the coolest thing. So you go on the computer and it's a, you go into a conference, it's like a conference call, we used to all talk on conference calls, but now it's live person, so you see each other, and so it's nice if you brush your hair and brush your teeth, you know. <laughs> yeah. I, I always have to have my makeup on because I'm just that way, but you don't have to. But you know what I'm saying, it's a live call. And so eight, eight hours a month, so every once a month, we'll do a two-hour call where I'll do some training and we'll do input back and forth, similar to things like I might say, I want you to, to go through this list of things of purpose. For instance, the thing we did today, something like that, and we would do it and we would have this feedback that goes back and forth. Um, and we'd have um, once, a, once a month that two hour training and then every week we would have a one hour thing where we get on together and what happens is you learn from the other people. So if someone's having a struggle, so let's just talk from business, some of this will be business. I think a lot of it really is going to deal probably more with your own, who you are, your self esteem and your self confidence because that is what once you get good with that and you really understand that, it, that's how you're successful in business. When you know, your business, other things in your life come because of how you're doing inside yourself. So we'll have a weekly call um, on the Zoom where we'll see each other. And then I'm gonna send you every week, I'm gonna send you a little recorded call. And it's gonna be your little, woohoo, keep going, you can do it, here's your inspiration for the week. And it'll be just like a little, I don't know, five minute, not any 20 minute long thing. So when you get it, what I would hope is that you'll listen to it and it will give you your little buzz for the week, your thought, your one thing maybe to think on and focus for the week. So maybe, uh, you know, I don't know what it would be right now, but, um, but there'll be a new one every week. So, you'll, so we'll have the two hour workshops once a month and every week we'll have a Zoom live call. You'll also get the inspirational call. And then you also get two private one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions with me, um, a half hour each during this time frame. We'll have a, a, a private Facebook group where you can get on there and I, what I would hope is that you would talk to each other. It's like, oh my gosh, I did this today. I never did it before. Who was the zip line, right? That, so that would have been a great thing. She had gone on the Facebook, it's like, oh my gosh, I was so scared, but I did it. I did the zip line. It's like, wow, okay. Or it might be, you know, it's like, okay, I tried this thing and it sort of flopped didn't go quite like I expected. And then we're all gonna say, well, gosh, good for you. You actually did it. I mean, you know, you didn't sit home and think about it and got too scared to go. So it gave you that, you know, it gives you that kudos because we need to celebrate. No, we don't celebrate enough. You need to celebrate all the things that you do, the little things. And that's what the private Facebook group will do. And if you have a question like, gosh, I've got a big meeting tomorrow and I don't quite know how to say this thing or how, if somebody says this, how do I answer it? Like, you know, how to overcome objections or whatever. Um, then, and then also, so, and I will actually have things for you to uh, like 
activity. Let's not call it an assignment because none of us like being in school. But I'll, I'll give you a challenge or an activity or something, whatever you want to call it, that makes peace with your own mind so you don't rebel against me. And, and then you do that and you can send it to me and then I'll look at it so that then I know how to respond to you because I do not want to, I never am going to put people in a program that I already have designed for you to fit into my program and fit into the mold. It is always going to be what is it that you need me to fit in to help you where you are in your life. So that's what our power thing is. So I want you to get clear, get confident, and get going. And now that, so all of that does have, a, a, have an investment thing for you. You deserve to invest in yourself, like you, you invested in yourself to come here today. And so um, if you guys want to go ahead and pass out those little papers, and I'm, they're just going to, it's only going to give you what this says up here already, so you're not going to have any big shock. But um, that actually, if you add all of that together, um, the time that the spending here, if you base it on what my private coaching is, would be actually over $3,000 in coaching. I mean, that's, that's what the actual price would be if I just, you know, put it out there. But obviously, I don't want to do that. I want to make it a reasonable thing that if you really want to move up and you want to get clarity and you want to have some of that help. So that, so like I said, the front page just listed out, but at the very bottom, and I always need one. Did you have an extra one? Okay. So. Okay. Okay. All right. So the other thing is you'll also get new ideas. You'll, all, you'll automatically have a ticket, a complimentary ticket to the next wow, wherever it is, if you want to come or the next event and special other kind of things. So. Um, and, and obviously the date and the time, you know, if it'll be a Tuesday morning or a Tuesday night, that all will be determined and we'll figure that out. That, so it's over $3,000 in value that, um, for the support and the coaching and the encouragement. And your price would be $297 a month, which is a lot less than $3,000 if, if you do it together. So for $297, $297 so just write that right in there, $297. $297 a month for the next four months. And I know you're going to say, well, but that's Thanksgiving and Christmas. And I do know that. So that's why it's actually, I'm sort of saying it more, it's a 16 week, because what we'll do is we'll take that time out. You know, we won't do Thanksgiving and then when we get to Christmas. So the perfect part about it is then those last few weeks will be into January. And what are we always doing in January? Looking at where we are in our life. Look how ahead of schedule you're going to be. You're going to already be moving forward. You're going to always be in momentum going into the first of the year because as we finish up those, the 16 sessions in those first couple of weeks of January, you're going to be really ready to continue to walk into next year and you're not going to be where you are today. God's going to take you someplace else. I just get to be, I just get to be the vehicle to help you get there if you choose to do so. So does anybody have just like a quick question? Now, I know sometimes your question would be more like one-on-one -on -one how I would exactly do it for you, but do you have like a general question that would help make things more clear of the group? When do you know you're overstretched? You're overstretching yourself and asking money for people where there is no possible way you can actually fulfill uh, the hours you're talking about here. When do you know you're overstretched? Are you talking about me or a, a person like yourself that you're overstretched? Uh, I don't think I'm overstretched, but I think I have health challenges that are asking me certain questions that I'm trying to take seriously. Right. And I would say address, always address your physical health problems because if you have things going on, um, and sometimes I, sometimes I can be part of that and helping giving you ideas of ways to look for other resources because a lot of the things that coaching does is help you look at other answers. There is always... I believe there's always an option, another way for every circumstance there is out there. You know, and I'm not saying, but I think you always have to look very carefully at your, if you're looking at health issues, that's for sure. So what I would like everybody to do, because I don't want anybody to feel embarrassed or whatever. So on the second page, if you just fill in the top, everybody fill in the top, everybody fill in the top, because this is just your name and phone number and email so that I can keep you on the, let you know when the next wow is. And then there's, there's like five, I was gonna say four, but there's really five. And so everybody gets to answer one, and then you're gonna, you're gonna give it to you. So your one is, yes, I'm ready to start it, count me in, here's my deposit. The next one is, I have a few questions. I'd like a complimentary 30-minute session with you just to kind of find out my own questions, if this would be right fit. 
Some of you may know right now and say, I want more faster. I don't really want to be in a group. I really want to do one-on-one -on -one coaching with, with me. Um, in which case then it says, let's set up a time to discuss what's best for you. That way we, I can talk to you one-on-one -on -one and, and really suggest what program might be best or you know, we can talk about the one-on-one -on -one if that's the best thing for you. The, other, next, the next one is, I don't really want to pay every month. I'd like to pay in full, in which case I'm giving you, um, it's almost like a $200 discount. If you want to just pay in full for $1,000 today, you can put a deposit down. But if you want to just pay it all up front, get the discount. Or the next one says, no, I'm really fine. I don't really need the help right now. So, you know, and that's okay. I mean, every answer is good. So it doesn't matter. Uh, but I would like to have your information to make sure that I can align it with my uh, records. So on your emails, because I had several people I mean, I sent out numerous emails about different things for the conference, and some of you I know didn't get them and said, oh, I never got the one about the scarves, or I didn't get the such and such. So um, I just want to make sure I have correct information. And so <clears throat> we're going we're gonna to take a slight break while you open this up. So here's what I'd like you to do. So let me ask first. Does anybody have a question? Is there any question I can answer? The about mic's off. Oh, mic's off? Mic's off. Is my mic off? Uh, Larry? Hello? Maybe my battery went out. Okay. All right. Well, yeah, yeah. Have I been off a long time? Okay, so nobody's going to feel good. Oh, so that's what you do. You turned me off so nobody can. <laughs> All right. So, okay. I don't, where was I? Oh, I was getting ready to give y'all some information. Oh, first of all, did anybody have a question? That's where I was. Anybody have a question? Okay, no. All right, so if you, when you fill this out, we're going to take a break. The music will come on. If you would like to, um, if, if you have answered that, yes, you want to get started, what I want you to do is to go over to Shelly. She's going to, yes? Is, okay. Oh, so Shelly is going to, uh, be, she'll help you there at the table. Just take it over to her and visit with her. She'll help you with uh, going ahead and signing up, and then I'll be contacting you about the day of the week and all of that. Um, if you, otherwise, I do want your information, so if you'll just, where can I put the, if you'll just bring your, um, if you want to join Shelly over there to get started, or if not, or if you have other questions, just bring, come and bring them right here, just so I have them and we can collect them all. Is that all right? All right, everybody got that? So um, I want you to go have another break, and then we'll come back to finish up with practice and perseverance. All right. Woohoo! Music, sir. Mm -hmm. 